Before we get into the video, I need you guys to do me a favour. Number one, like the video. Also comment, let me know your thoughts on the case. Glasgow's Darren Sinclair was also known as Sinky, and he was classed by the media as a vulnerable man who was ensnared by a duo of gangsters who were disgruntled by the fact that Darren had broke the cardinal code of what it meant to be a gangster, i.e. talking to the police was a no-no. So a group of drum trapper gangsters had assembled and patrolled up and down Glasgow area looking for Sinky, including bookies and then the local chip shop. These gangsters were going to teach Sinky a lesson of what it meant to be a grass. However, rightly or wrongly, Darren Sinclair was also a known menace and he was a well-known gangster himself, whom had served jail time in Parmont and loved a scrap. From a teenager, Scotland Police had classed Darren Sinclair as one of the most dangerous teenagers in Scotland for his lack of fear and his involvement in at least two stabbings, an ABH among other things, and also drug dealing. Now Darren was known in the drum trapple area for wandering around with a gang. He had become involved in brawls and also stabbings and marking rivals' faces with blades. He gave as good as he got. Unfortunately, he wasn't innocent. He also made a lot of enemies, as a lot of gangsters were vying for control of the drug flow in the drum trapple and its surrounding areas. By February 2018, Darren was firmly involved in a tit-for-tat action in the drum trapple area. On one side, there was Darren and his gang, and the opposition were known rivals, 50-year-old William Steele and 23-year-old Jordan Steele. Now, the issue was said to have stemmed from drug dealing in the local area, and each gang wanted to monopolise the drug trade. Now windows had been smashed previously, and both men had promised. Reports claim that William Steele and Jordan Steele had followed Darren Sinclair in a car on February 9th as Darren walked down Poor Tree Place. The car had then veered and ploughed into Darren Sinclair. So Darren had been shunted a few metres, I mean his body left the ground, before he rolled along the road before coming to a stop. He was in a bad way almost immediately. Now it was alleged that William and Jordan then exited the car armed with machetes and also metal poles. Involved in the incident were other unnamed people. Now the group of brutes then slashed, jabbed, prodded, struck and striked Darren. The target area being the head mainly but also the body. And this was a clear M attempt. Now after the incident the car used in the attempted murder had been set alight. Darren Sinclair was so badly injured that he was left with brain damage. He was a shell of his former self. Now after coming out of hospital and now suffering from severe brain damage, Darren's family moved him to England in order to get away from the brewing trouble. Now there were rumours circulating around Scotland that a bounty of £30,000 had been put on Sinclair's head. His home had also been graffitied with the words grass and snitch because Darren had allegedly talked to the police about the previous M attempts. He also talked to the police about the graffiti. Now two days before his own M, Sinky had returned to the drum trapple area in order to see a firework display. This proved a grave mistake. 27 year old Darren Sinclair was witnessed being in the bookies when 35 year old Joseph McIntyre had knocked on the window, an apparent warning to Sinky. Now it was says on November 6th, after going to the firework display, he had been lured to the wasteland by In the Canny Place by Joseph McIntyre and 21 year old Robert Dunn. Now once there Darren was surrounded and told that he was a grass and this is what grasses get. Darren was pummeled, he was struck repeatedly in the face and then when he was on the ground he was slashed, target area being the face and then he was fatally stabbed upwards of 10 times at roughly 12.30am. Only when Darren Sinclair was no longer screaming for help or whimpering or crying or moving did the onslaught stop. Tragically, Darren was found by a passerby and it was already too late because he was already pronounced dead. Now, in the aftermath of the incident, Joseph McIntyre went into hiding at a relative's home in the Highlands. He also grew a beard and changed the colour of his hair. He was ultimately arrested and when confronted with the news that Darren had died, Joseph and Robert had exclaimed, good, that's what grasses get. Now, it was alleged that Joseph also told a 10-year-old girl what had happened and she actually told the police. Now, forensic evidence also linked both Darren Dunn and Joseph McIntyre to the crime. 
but it was also known that both men were in effect hitmen for hire, as they were acting on behalf of other gangsters, because Robert and Joseph had no previous runnings with Darren Sinclair, so there was no clear motive other than being paid a wage. Now, it was reported that leading up to the incident, Joseph McIntyre had actually spoken to William Steele, person that was convicted for the previous attempted M on Darren Sinclair. Now, Joseph McIntyre was jailed for life with a minimum term of 23 years. The judge told him that even when he serves 23 years, there's no guarantee that he will get out. And that's for Robert Dunn, he was jailed for 11 years on a lesser charge. And this is exactly why that there's no benefit to being a gangster. Ultimately, that kind of life will catch up with you. And it's only one way out. Condolences. Stay safe. Safe.